International Media TV. Television that listens to you. Hi, I'm Johnny Burrell. Welcome to the program. These mics are for the ears of the camera, oh, and this, this is for the ears of the audience. Well, I want the ears here. Yeah, okay. Uh, please give me these ears. Well, well uh, what's the camera for? So when we broadcast, they can hear you. You're not going to edit me. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. All right. I promise. Sure. I promise. Yeah, okay. You trust me? No. Okay, well. <laughs> I trust you. All right, good. <laughs> I came because I wanted to hear what the community was saying about the potential for uh, the absence of uh, something that my administration, as you will recall, uh, Madam Supervisor, put a lot of money in. Hmm? Okay, we'll I was just telling, just we'll hold do that. Oh, to the we'll speaker. That. Which put a lot of money in. Uh, a lot of money has gone into this facility. and. I'm frankly sorry that this room is not packed with African Americans in particular who should be here raising lots of questions about what will happen to this uh, facility. I think, uh, Madam Supervisor, you note that when something similar to this happens in Chinatown, um, there are just a ton of people who show up and raise unholy hell about the potential, even if it's a private development and a private business operation. We don't seem to have the same level of expressions and support uh, for you and the members of your board of supervisors. And I must say that um, I said to Amos uh, two days ago or three days ago at Leroy King's service, someone had just pulled my coattail that not only are we about to lose uh, this facility, but F.D. Haynes' home that was put together, what? What are you talking about? Who? Well, I think all matters that adversely impacts our community, and in particular, since there are not a lot of places for us to live in this town anymore, in view of the enormous increase in cost. And Amos, it was in the 60s when we first put together the program where the churches in the Fillmore all jumped at the chance uh, to take advantage of HUD's 221D3 financing programs and nonprofits were created for that purpose. They never became part of the nonprofit cartel in this town that has such a stranglehold on affordable housing. And it's a good stranglehold because they've been able to keep affordable housing in all the communities except ours. Uh, in place, no matter what. Jones Methodist and your church, Bethel and a few others who actually stepped up and put the programs together and you qualified as a nonprofit, but you couldn't do it as a church, you had to do it as a separate operation. And you did that and now all the mortgages are being paid off within the next month. Wow. Some cases already done but in, not in the not too distant future. And suddenly, the people who are running these nonprofits are about to look at 40 to $80 million in money that's going to corrupt the nonprofits that we don't even know who's on the board. We don't even know who the people are. We don't even know what it's about. And I, it came to my attention, interestingly enough, through the law firm that former city attorney Louise Rennie has, and the question was asked, uh, 
did I have any reaction to that? I said, of course I have a reaction to that. Just like I have a reaction to uh, any removal of any affordable housing in this city under any circumstances that cannot be, that cannot be. And believe me, I don't know who those tenants are. I assume that they're people uh, who are members of our churches, who are part of our community and what have you. And we ought to be, because Thursday is their date. Thursday is the date that they're talking about having a bid to buy out uh, the facility and to give it to someone who then is going to take it and make it market rate housing, which almost instantly means not housing for us. And so I, I, I think not only should we be about trying to make sure that we hold on uh, to, uh, to that particular building next door that we put so many years in and so much public money in. There's just no way the city ought to walk away from and allow, and allow this to occur. I would hope, Mr. President, Madam President, that there could be a resolution tomorrow uh, before your board introduced on an emergency basis, literally requiring the city to step in with the city attorney being involved to stop that cell, yeah. to stop that cell. Uh, I frankly, I frankly don't know how it got this far. If somebody tried to sell one of those uh, SRO hotels downtown San Francisco, all of the city would be enraged and they would be all over. Well, this is family housing, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and four bedrooms. And they're all affordable because HUD provided the original money. And believe me, we ought to be about trying to make sure that it doesn't happen, just like we ought to be about trying to make sure that this facility at 1300 to 1340 or whatever the number is, we ought to be about trying to orchestrate the process. And believe me, you know that if I sat in the mayor's office, you wouldn't need to be here. You wouldn't need to be here. You would not need to be here. You would not need to be here. Well, I am, I am not, I am not the mayor. So you need to be here in numbers greater than these here in this room. And believe me, tomorrow at the Board of Supervisors, that chamber ought to be full of nothing except black folk literally there demanding that all aspects of our city government align itself for the purpose of making sure those two items are not ripped off from this community under any circumstances. Whether or not it remains a jazz facility, it needs to be within the confines of this community under every single solitary circumstance. And there clearly is a way, believe me, it would not be an attractive option if you can make a profit. We just haven't figured out how to do it yet, apparently. And obviously, we need to do that. We need to pick the brains and what have you. And believe me, I am firmly of the opinion that it is achievable, period. But in the world of public policy making, you have got to be militant and interested enough and interested enough to make your vote, to make your vote valuable enough so that there will be a response, period. And the fact that London is there as President Porter supervises gives us the edge we need. That's as close as we're going to get to a mayor. She's it. And believe me, we need to make sure she has all the resources that she needs to make sure this happens. And believe me, all those progressives on that board, if something was happening in the mission, there would be five of them physically present. There would be five of them physically present here raising unholy hell about what was about to happen to the mission. Well, believe me, I know that if the five 
had the opportunity, they'd jump at the chance to hang with this community just to show whether they believe it or not, just to show that they're that committed. The only way they're going to become that committed is they're going to have to see you in person and in person and without hesitancy. And believe me, when that happens, I guarantee you that the, that sale will be stopped for the moment and the people who are allegedly the nonprofit managers of that will be called to task. HUD obviously has lost its ability because bond, the, the, the mortgage has been paid off, but that doesn't mean that there still cannot be heavy duty government involvement in maintaining the level of opportunity, and believe me, I think Arnold Townsend lives there. He does. Doesn't he? Well, some of you have to put him up. Because I know he does not make enough money for market rate housing, period. And so some of you have to take him in. And there are a whole bunch of other, probably 99 other, it was 100 units, isn't it? 104. 104 units. Then there are, nine, there are 104 more units other than just the one that Arnold occupies. And I don't know how many are in Bethel. I know how many are in Jones. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, we are a community that have been perceived as not having the numbers we need to do the things we need to do. I don't believe. I do not believe that we aren't forceful enough with our allies and with our relationships to develop the thrust that would cause all things to stop. There's no reason anybody ought to be siding with those nonprofit operators who are trying to rip off the community in any one of those respective projects. And there is no way a simple debt that the city has uh, from whoever made the deal originally over at Yoshi's, and when Yoshi's was there, that place earned $10 million a year. How in the name of heavens can that not have been a successful venture? And it was at that time. And then we built, obviously, the, the new jazz facility down there. That simply means you do something else with that facility, reflective, if necessary, of what African Americans are all about. But we aren't either smart enough to do it or we are unwilling to do it. And believe me, we do have the political muscle. We've got London. And i got to believe that Ed Lee, who was a lawyer for the people in Chinatown, would never allow this to happen to his folk in Chinatown. And we should not. And, I, and I'm certain, I'm certain, I'm certain on the proper approach he will not allow this to happen to the people in the Fillmore. Thank you, Mayor Brown. And I definitely won't let it happen either.